Brazil stands firm against pressure and repeatedly expresses its firm cooperation with China. Recently, Brazil took the first step in establishing a relationship with China's technology industry despite efforts by the United States. During Brazilian president's visit to China from April 12 to 15, he agreed to establish a working group with Chinese leaders to develop semiconductor production in South America. However, contrary to Brazil's approach, the United States-led alliance is actively trying to suppress China's nascent semiconductor industry. These measures include cutting off China's supply chain for semiconductor equipment and materials. For years, the United States has been pressuring allies and friendly countries, especially European countries, to remove and replace Huawei and ZTE equipment from their networks, citing national security concerns. These efforts are ongoing, with the British government recently announcing a dismantling and replacement order, while Germany is currently weighing the economic consequences of following suit. During the previous Brazilian government, the country considered banning the use of Chinese telecommunications equipment, but quickly backed down after operators complained that such bans would push up prices. However, despite the warnings, Brazilian officials have turned a deaf ear to any pressure from the United States. In March of this year, former Brazilian Foreign Minister Celso Amorim said Brazil was not afraid of the big bad wolf, and if a Chinese chipmaker proposed building a plant there, he did not understand why they would refuse. It is well known that chip manufacturing is a costly process that relies not only on materials, but also on electricity, water, and talent. For years, the United States has imposed wave after wave of sanctions and export bans on Chinese companies to suppress China's nascent semiconductor industry, while rallying allies. However, as the United States becomes more aggressive, this puts several countries, including Brazil, in a strategic dilemma of choosing sides in the global trade war. So, why did Brazil choose China? Why does China's chip industry remain strong despite export restrictions? Okay, that and more is exactly what we are going to talk about today. One of the most reasonable factors is cost. The United States and Europe have promised billions of dollars in subsidies and tax breaks to convince wafer foundry operators to build wafer fabs in their countries. The US Chip and Science Act has invested $39 billion in this endeavor, while the European version of the act will allocate 43 billion euros once passed. The United States and the European Union represent the world's two largest economies. Brazil's GDP is $1.6 trillion which pales in comparison to the United States' $23.3 trillion, and the European Union's $15.5 trillion. Therefore, Brazilian President Lula may face financial difficulties in attracting chip manufacturers allied with the United States to open factories in Brazil. The construction cost of these facilities is not low, especially with the inflation pushing up material costs. In this context, Intel now expects to spend about $15 billion on its two wafer factories in Arizona, while TSMC will invest $43 billion in its two wafer factories in the state. Although operating in countries like Brazil may be cheaper for them, it is certain that it will not be as cheap, where Lula may struggle to attract companies such as Intel, TSMC, or Samsung, he may be more successful in convincing Chinese companies to invest in his country. Although semiconductor manufacturing is costly, it presents an opportunity for China to showcase its importance on the global semiconductor stage while expanding its potential market, entering the undeveloped semiconductor market in South America without cash or tax breaks, is undoubtedly a reason to build a factory in Brazil. For this reason, US chip manufacturers have previously considered expanding their business in Brazil. However, a lack of infrastructure, talent, and a history of political unrest has largely hindered long-term, large-scale investment. However, according to the Belt and Road Initiative, China has a long history of infrastructure investment. As a way of instilling goodwill, this initiative aims to create trade routes and ultimately establish a dependence on goods and services made in China. Although the United States has avoided countries with insufficient infrastructure, China has seized the opportunity to cultivate fertile ground for expanding its influence. Meanwhile, pursuing Chinese technology has many benefits for Lula. Chinese investment in the domestic semiconductor manufacturing industry will not only create employment opportunities domestically, but may also attract complementary businesses and ensure a stable supply of low-cost semiconductors. Why does China's chip industry still have strength despite export restrictions?
China has just responded to the sanctions by saying, do not do unto others what you do not want done to yourself. In early March, the Netherlands took a similar step, saying it would expand restrictions on the export of advanced chip manufacturing technology, including the most advanced immersion and immersion-type lithography tools. These restrictions are expected to affect the overseas sales of ASML's most advanced immersion deep ultraviolet systems based in the Netherlands. Industry experts say that Japan's restrictions will escalate on top of U.S. export restrictions, but China's position as the world's largest semiconductor market means it has room to maneuver. Although the United States, the Netherlands, and Japan together dominate the global chip equipment market, Chinese companies are among their largest customers, especially Japanese lithography machine manufacturers. However, some industry experts say that the export restrictions implemented after the United States announced comprehensive chip restrictions last October may accelerate the progress of China's domestic industry. Blockade will only further stimulate China's determination to develop independently. In January, Japanese Prime Minister Fumio Kishida visited the US and met with President Biden and the Dutch Prime Minister. According to sources cited by U.S. media, Japan and the Netherlands agreed at that meeting to join Washington in banning the export of certain high-tech chip equipment to China. The Biden administration has already cut off Chinese companies' access to various types of advanced chips and chip-making equipment from U.S. companies. The comprehensive export restrictions launched in October banned the export of advanced computing chips, chip-making equipment, and other products to China. As the dominant player in various fields of the global semiconductor supply chain, the U.S. is able to exert pressure on foreign partners. Although ASML, the world's leading semiconductor manufacturing equipment supplier, is a Dutch company, it procures components from the global market, including a large number of U.S. companies. However, foreign chip equipment companies may also find it difficult to completely sever ties with China, as they still derive a large portion of their revenue from China. China is the world's largest consumer of semiconductors, and its market power will provide some room for maneuver. For ASML, mainland China was the company's third-largest market last year, accounting for 13.8% of its net sales of 21.1 billion euros. Japanese chip equipment manufacturers, such as Tokyo Electron, Nikon, and Canon, are even more reliant on the Chinese market. The company's earnings reports show that in the fiscal year ending March 2022, Tokyo Electron's sales in China amounted to 566.2 billion yen, $4.3 billion, making it its largest market, accounting for 28% of its total sales. China is also Nikon's largest market, with 28% of its sales in the 2022 fiscal year coming from China. According to the United Nations Commodity Trade Database, Japan's exports of chip manufacturing equipment to China increased by 32% to $11.9 billion in. 2021, accounting for 38.8% of total production. Takamizawa, chairman of the Japan-China Economic Association, said that despite sanctions, affected companies may still find ways to continue doing business with China. He said that one method for Japanese companies is to establish local factories to increase sales to mainland China, adding that this would help minimize the impact of Japanese sanctions. Against the backdrop of accelerating tech decoupling between China and the US, some Japanese companies have begun splitting their business teams to serve both the Chinese and overseas markets, while others are moving production facilities for export products out of the mainland. However, Japan was basically silent on this issue before announcing its export restriction plan. An expert in Sino-Japanese economic and trade relations based in Tokyo said that there were differences within the Japanese government on how to respond to the US agreement. The Netherlands also saw resistance from industry insiders and the government to the U.S. export restrictions movement. On January 25, ASML CEO Peter Wenning proposed the idea of refusing to join the U.S. In an interview, he warned that export controls against China could eventually lead to China's successful development of its own advanced chip manufacturing technology. So, what do you think Japan and the Netherlands will do next? Well, thanks for your watching, and please be free to put your comments below, and share your insightful ideas. Please keep following our channel and like our videos. I am Tech Teller, the person to tell you the opinions that are worth spreading every day. Thank you so much for your continuous support. Your precious time with us is highly appreciated. See you.